It's Tozer. Sometimes I see things and hear things that boggle my mind that convince me that <laughs> not only is it the end of the world, but we definitely, all of us, that are Christian, you know, we don't fit, you know, we don't belong. That this really is not our home, that the more we seek to be like Jesus, the more that the world will try to make us like itself, to become violent, to become reactive, to become proactive, to become discontent, to rise up for our rights, to exercise our own selfish desires, to, you know, establish our own personal freedoms, you know, and our our quasi-idealisms that always seem to hide on the surface they sound so good but when you kind of cut away you know all the nice sounding words you look down underneath and it's like somebody's deceiving somebody and using somebody to get what they want and that's just not right I mean it doesn't matter what topic you put in there it doesn't work and the thing I found is that in God's kingdom his laws are just his facts are true what he says he does what he says if you do this this happens and it works when the world tells me something of, you know like get involved in politics or that they're my representative or anything like that or even free enterprise none of it seems to be free it's always got extra 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 this there's always, as you dig deeper and deeper and deeper, you see that you're really enslaved, you know, more to it than you are to God himself. And I just see it as a lie. So, for me, I don't know. I like being in the kingdom rather than being in a country. I like having a king rather than I like having all the world and its ways. I like seeking Jesus and what he has to say than to listen to the news or some action committee or some person or some program or some ideas. Because when God speaks, it always makes sense. God's spirit is a gentle, loving spirit. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame. Revelation 3.21 Genuine holiness of life and spirit can be put into the place of testing without fear. Whenever there is a breakdown of holiness, there is proof there never was any real degree of holiness in the first place. Whenever Satan has reason to fear a truth very gravely, he produces a counterfeit. Oops, that doesn't sound right. No wonder. I'm looking at June, and it's July. <laughs> I'm going, doesn't it sound familiar? It does. Wow, I like this one. God's ways are always perfect. <laughs> Great Bible saints, enraptured lovers of God. Hmm. Boy, that fits a lot better. But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice, and let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Psalm 5:11. Perhaps the most serious charge that can be brought against modern Christians is that we are not sufficiently in love with Jesus. Love that may rise to a degree of adoration almost beyond the power of the heart to endure. Neither the word adoration nor any of its forms is found in our familiar King James Bible, but the idea is there in full bloom. The great Bible saints were, above all, enraptured lovers of God. The Psalms celebrates the love which David and few others felt for the person of God. Paul confessed that love for Christ carried him beyond himself and made him do extravagant things which to a mind untouched with the delights of such love might seem irrational. In our Christian circles today, it is rare when we find anyone aglow with personal love for Jesus. I trust that it is not uncharitable to say that a great deal of praise in conservative circles is perfunctory and forced, where it is downright insincere. 
There can be nothing more terrible or more wonderful than to be stricken with love for Christ so deeply that a whole being goes out in a pained adoration of his person, an adoration that disturbs and disconcerts while it purges and satisfies and relaxes the deeper inner heart. Hmm. Boy, if that was a word, it word full. This love has a kind of moral fragrance is ever detected upon the garments of the saints, and the list of fragrant saints is long. This radiant love for Christ is, to my mind, the one sure proof of my membership in the church universal. You know, and that boils down to, is if you love Jesus, go for it, you know. Everything else, don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, you know, really, let's get real. If you love Jesus, go for it, man. Stick with him. You know, you got it covered. But if you try to get into all these other things, man, you know what? You're going to get bamboozled. <laughs> so, whatever your focus is on, whatever you love the most, you'll talk the most about. So if you're talking sports, you don't have my attention. If you're talking fantasy leagues, you don't have my attention. If you know the latest Super Bowl winner or a couple other things that's going on, hey, you know, I pay attention maybe if it's on at the time that I might change the channel and flip it on and say, hey, you know, there it is. Oh, okay, cool. If I have time, I'll watch it. If I don't, I don't. It doesn't matter to me because I would rather spend five minutes alone with God than to spend days or millennium alone with the world. And for me, it's all about Jesus or it's nothing. I can't live without him. And he's proven that to me over and over again. He is altogether lovely. Even with his scars.